Hello and welcome to the Quebba channel. I'm Jason, your host. Everything for a disabled person is harder to do than for a non-disabled person. Different disabilities affect people differently. But everything from grief to work, to food, to using the bathroom, to leaving the house. If you're disabled, either with mental problems or physical problems, you have extra hoops to get through, just to do normal things. To go to the bathroom, to put clothes on, to tie your shoelaces, to, rem to remember to do this. One of the reasons that I don't wear anything other than Crocs is because a long time ago, I used to wear um, trainers with laces. And it would be very, very easy for me to put my trainers on and then get distracted for something and walk off with with untied trainers. Very easy for me to do that. Which could be a tripping hazard and dangerous. Now I have a set routine. You know, I don't leave the house often at all. In fact, it's extremely rare and it's a multi-stage um, scenario. I, I, have, I have specific strategies of putting on my arm and my 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 mask goes on why do i wear a mask even if it wasn't for even if it wasn't for a certain virus i wear a mask because if i start to freak out if i start to panic out there if i start to hyperventilating then i don't get the guilt on top of thinking oh shit people can see this happening if I've got my hoodie up and I've got my glasses on and I've got that on, then people can't tell how terrified I am or whether or not I've frozen up in that. I don't have to explain the situation. And part of my armouring up is to put is to make sure I've got, because I have trainers for going outside, just for going outside, and it's a special type of trainers that I have, and uh, I, I remember to, it's part of the sequence of getting ready if I have to leave the house to tie the laces and that, so I remember. There's so much planning that goes into it. Waking up in the morning and not being able to remember what day it is, or date, or sometimes even month, and having to ask my Echo Dot or my personal assistant or check my phone and that. Give me a sec. I can hear seagulls outside. Oh. Do we, do we call, because we're not near the sea, do we call them earth gulls or whatever? What do we call them? See, what do we call, I've got to go and check this online now. I need to know what we call them. If we've got a different name for them when they're not actually by the sea. So that was interesting. I've heard that most of the ones we see around here are heron gulls. Okay, so. When I leave the house I have to take two phones with me I have my Samsung phone I have my fair phone I also take two different sets of headphones well one set of headphones one set of earbuds just in case they fail I can't leave the house unless I've got backup cannot walk out the door without these backups 
And if I really want to make myself more comfortable, I will have not only, seriously, I will not only have a battery for each of the phones, spare one, cables to charge them with, because what's the point? If you can't charge them, then they're going to go dead. And and if if I really, really want to come to my somehow I will carry with me one of my tiny little solar panels. So I can recharge the battery packs if I'm outside my house for months at a time. I will take my augmented reality glasses, my X-Real glasses, but I will also take another backup pair. So I will have my augmented reality glasses, or I will have these ones, which are the view. These are the smart glasses that I have. They, they've got little thingies in the side here. They're actually, they connect wirelessly to my phone and they've got audio and they, you can use them to talk to a voice assessment assessment and all these um, as well. Backups upon backups upon backups upon backups. It's... It's... Hmm, that didn't sound like a seagull or a herring gull. Give me a second. I just want to see if there's a... Sounds like there's a bird outside on my actual window. I just want to check. There was a crow outside my window. <laughs> but, and then of course I have to carry around a four terabyte hard drive that's got my entire life on it in case I can't come back to the house, in case a meteor hits the house while I'm gone and destroys everything. I know how irrational and non-chance, almost non-chance, of these things happening. But for me to walk out that door, I have to have all of that in place. I have to have one of my inhalers for asthma. Even though I haven't had an asthma attack, I've pretty much grown out of it in years and years and years. I... I then have to try and circumvent and worry about what if someone mugs me? Why? What if someone gets all this stuff? I've got to make sure that there's another set of all this stuff in my house that can replace what I've taken outside the house in case I lose everything outside the house. Yeah. This is why if I the main the the only way that I am ever going to be able to leave my house consistently and safely is to have a car of my own. It's the only way. I know I will probably never ever learn to drive. I will probably know how to drive because my dad used to take me, let me drive around the car park with him in the car. And I know about road safety and I've used a motorbike on fields and that, so I've got the kind of situation there, awareness of that. And I will probably ask if someone who's one of my friends when they're here if they've got a full license they can sit in the car and let me drive around and slowly give me a few pointers and let me take a few going around maybe even just going around this little quad where i live the road around where i live just once or twice just to get used to the vehicle because that will help solve the, oh my God, Jason, 
what if an apocalypse happened tomorrow and the zombies are coming and you've got to leave home and your friends can't come and drive you and it's an emergency situation and you need to get out. Knowing how to drive will alleviate that. Even if I don't have a driving license, and that, knowing the physical act of putting the key in, turning it on and what, how to move the car will put me in a situation, if that kind of situation happens, that I can GTFO. Which is another coping strategy. But I will probably never, in a normal situation in life, want to drive myself because of the issues that come up. But I'll be able to sit in the back. It'll be another safe space for me. And take the doggies in there with me, or the dog. And... There's disabled people are all unique. We're all unique. And we all have different needs in there. And all, every single one of the disabled people I've ever talked to, I've ever wanted, is something close to an equal footing. To be able to live, not just survive. And it's okay, it's okay if you're not disabled that you don't think about these things. I remember the first time I pushed Paula's wheelchair and how different it was and how much awareness you have to have of a wheelchair and how it moves and the space it takes up and every single crack and problem in the pavement can cause issues and your wheels can get stuck in plingy. If you walk, you don't ever notice that. That some of the curbs are just too high and you can't get back up off the road onto the curbs. That when you... When you are trying to cross a road that you've got to realize that you're the there's another three or four foot in front of you that's actually at risk and vulnerable before you can look around the car to see whether anybody's coming especially if you're not being pushed by someone if you're having if you're in a wheelchair and going somewhere on yourself it can be really scary. There's a special hatred for those fucking idiots who park right up against a crossing and that, or right up against a place they're not supposed to. They don't think about what it's like for disabled people. And they are so fucking lucky not to. And this is not counting all the panic and anxiety that's different for everybody. The debilitating suffering, literally, when I say bad things can happen to me when I leave the house, and when I describe what happened when I left the house to go and look at those cars, when I described how it was, a, the fact that I only had hyper, hyperventilations, that I only had freaked out a certain amount of times and I only and it only affected me for a few days afterwards and so on and so forth that was a good day because the worst type of day would be me trying to leave my house and something triggering me and causing my PTSD to kick in or my the way I become non-functioning and I would just freeze up how do you cope <sighs> and i'm not the worst 
Yes, I can go outside my house and I can have something trigger my PTSD and I will literally pretty much fall down where I am and for 30 minutes as my brain relives the death of my wife, I will be completely unaware. I could have fallen down in the middle of a road. I could have fallen down um, into some water. If I was anywhere near water, I'd make sure I'm not. But And my not the way I go non-functioning Imagine if I'm imagine if I'm crossing a road. Imagine if I'm crossing a road. Imagine if I'm crossing a road, and someone on the other side of the road says hello to me, and I just froze completely, halfway across the road. This is not the. This is not the, That's the bad things. That can happen on the stairs, and I could fall down the stairs if my PTSD triggered. Worst case scenario, I could fall all the way from the top of the stairs to the bottom of the stairs. This is why I'm classed as severely disabled, all these things that I face. This is why I have so many so many wonderful coping strategies. This is why when I get up from my seat, I turn on my audio books and have them running in the background. And I'll either be listening through <coughs> this or I'll be listening through my little earbuds or my noise cancelling headphones or something else. And I will do that because that is the surefire way of stopping my me being triggered but I'm always vulnerable to some trigger that I haven't created a coping strategy for yet one of the best thing is when someone's in my house when Brit comes visiting that because my focus is always on that person then. That person, for those few days they're here, or for when they visit me, they are my anchor. They are my focus. I can focus on them and stop my brain from wandering into bad places. It's... It's exhausting to live your life this way, to live your life with such need to have so many coping strategies means never actually being able to just walk out the front door to go to the local shop because you've, you feel like having a cake or an ice cream or, or Oh, I feel like making bacon sandwiches. So, if I want, if I, I wanted bacon sandwiches, not supposed to have them, but let's say, let's say, let's say the urge gets to me, and I really, really want bacon sandwiches, no matter what. Maybe I've seen an advert. Maybe I've watched a film where they're eating, eating bacon sandwiches. I don't know, but someone's tri something's triggered, and my ADHD has grabbed hold of me and said, "You want them. You want them. You've got to have them." For you, that would be walk out, go to the local shop, grab some, come home, and do it. For me, it's put all my armour on, make sure my batteries are charged, make sure this is charged. If they're not charged, I can't leave the house because even if I've got batteries with them, they could fail and da da da. da. So, got to get all that done, got to all that. And if I want to leave the house, I figure out that I can't leave the house. 
I can't leave the house. I can't go to the shop. I can't make it there. What if someone said hello to me on the street? No, 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 can't do that. That cannot be done. And therefore, my choice is begun. Okay, if I want bacon right now, I can spend money that I don't have to order some from one of the online grocery stores to get here in 20 minutes. Or I can sacrifice some of my food budget to get a takeout with bacon. And so on. It's... Yes, online shopping is a convenience, but it's also expensive. And if you just want one thing, I can't just have one thing. Last week, last week, perfect example. Last week, I think it was last week, or it was the early beginning of this week. I was talking to someone <laughs> on Discord. I was talking to Rupertis and he meant to, we were mentioning ice cream and Ben and Jerry's and we men they mentioned fricking, um what was it? Cookie dough ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. And my brain went, ooh, you want that and you want that now. I remember because of the ADHD and that when you, you can't say, no, I'll wait till later because if you don't do it right now, right now, then you don't get to do anything else for the day because you're stuck, stuck on that. Mine got to have, got to have, got to have. So what did I do? So so I was I was halfway through playing um Star Trek Online. That so I the mission had just started for my daily. I was in the mission, I was in the force. I had to out tap out of the mission. <laughs> and and me pretty said, Oh yeah, I'm not supposed to say things like that. <laughs> it's like and I instantly go to Just Eat and I find a place that's got Ben and Jerry's cookie you dough. Know, and I bought and I ordered that and I also ordered some um, chicken strippers, cooked chicken strippers from the same place for the for barrel and that. So it was a positive anyway. And then I ordered it and then I could go back to the game. And then 20 minutes later I had to go down and get the stuff because it arrived and this is what happened. A disabled person's life costs way more money, even in the just normal time, than they're not. They're not. It's it's not the the benefits and all that are not just are not a free money. Are not a oh my god, you didn't work for that, you shouldn't have it. It helps us to just have enough to either survive or actually live. The stuff we face and do, thankfully, non-disabled people don't have to see that, don't have to know that, don't have to go through that. And that's a good thing. They shouldn't have to. I mean, seriously, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Anyway, this has gone on for too long. I've had a nice chat, though. We've had a nice chat. It's it's. I've got to go down and have food and do food and food. Food needs to be done. Food needs to be done. Need to do food. Need to be food. Need to be food. Food needs to be done. Yeah. Yep. 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 I hope you're all having a wonderful day.